Hey, this is Sandy. And Randy. And we're here on AT Corner. Being an athletic trainer comes with ups and downs, and we're here to showcase it all. Join us as we share our world in sports medicine. Welcome back to another episode of AT Corner. This is part two of our setting episode, uh, story episode. It is. So this one's actually a little bit different. We are going to pick back up with, um, I think we left off on the pro setting. Yes. Um, and yes, we're going to be talking about pros, but then we're going to be talking about pros and cons of different settings. A lot of pros. And we, a lot of pros here. We are. We are. <laughs> and we did get some, actually, we got a few military stories. Okay. So we have some of those at the end. Um, I think we have another industrial, and then we just have pros and cons of different settings. In general, I believe that uh, each setting definitely has their uh, their pros and cons. And then at the end, I don't know if I put it at the end. I put it somewhere. We have pros and cons in general. And it was very interesting to see how many pros and cons were on both pros and cons list. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's all relative. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what I was going to say. That's true. One one man's trash is another man's treasure, right, I guess. Right, right. Do you want to start with our pro story? Yes, let's do it. This one's by Anonymous. One year fellowship right out of grad school turned into full time and I've been with the USOPC ever since. 14 years and counting. That's awesome. I work for the USOPC at the Olympic and Paralympic Training Center, which means I work with all teams, summer, winter, Olympic, Paralympic. It's not for everyone. Adapting to my setting would be challenging for some due to not working with one team, but instead, theoretically, working with over 50. Different in seasons, out of seasons, qualification requirements, and the list goes on. The other challenge is there is no off-season. Summer sports may slow, but the winter sports are still going strong. Summer Olympics happening still have full summer load of athletes training for the next Olympics, etc., that is true. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Olympic cycle just never ends. Oh, yeah. There's no such thing as off-season. <laughs> Their off-season is still training. Yeah, but, you know, like like you said, that point, too, is uh, even if it's like take the summer kiddos, they're still doing stuff in the winter, just not as much. Right. That's busy. And if anything, that just means recovery game is super strong. Yep. Big time. Mm-hmm. I feel like something that we also got from a lot of people who were talking about Olympics is the politics. That was a big yes. con. Yeah, I remember we brought someone had a story like that um, in part one. There's definitely a lot of politics. And, you know, I've noticed that, too. I've seen it firsthand where um, we were working uh, one event and one of the certifieds was concerned that, you know, this athlete had a pretty significant injury that might require some surgery. What event was this? Uh, pole vault summit, I believe. Oh. And uh, uh, the AT was educating the patient about that or the athlete about, you know, what might be entailed. And the athlete freaked out, coaches freaked out, and there was a certain way that it might have been handled, you know, to help ease that. But, yes, there are definitely politics when you start talking about the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't imagine, especially when they're, you know how with normal sports, it's like, oh, you have a game every week or you have two games every week or whatever. Yeah. With the Olympics, it's like you have one chance every four years. Yeah. I mean, yeah, right. You have the world championships and all that stuff, but literally everything's geared up towards that four year cycle mm-hmm. for, towards that Olympics. That's where you want to peak at your very best. Right. That's just so different. I feel like it's just so different from like what I would do, what I do day day to day. Oh, very different. Um, We have another pro story. Um, So this one's also anonymous, which I feel like in the pros, it just kind of makes sense. Yeah. It kind of goes with those politics, (laughs) right? Definitely. Um, So this person said, as a student, I wanted to work in the NFL. Along the way, after being certified, I realized I was better suited for pro baseball. I'm in the minor leagues. I can't think of any big cons besides the obvious ones, along with all the sacrifices from me and my family. Maybe having to lace gloves from time yeah, to time. I heard that's pretty tough. I don't even... That, that could be annoying if you're the only one who knows how to do it. I don't even know what that is. Uh, It's like... Because like the gloves have laces. Uh-huh. So sometimes they need to be redone or repaired, and like that can get annoying. 
Why do athletic trainers need to do that? Because in the minor leagues, there's really not much of an equipment guy. Mm. You're kind of, you kind of are the equipment guy. Got it. Um, well, I actually include this story because um, I asked this person about what it was like. And obviously, because I haven't been in the minor leagues, I hear about the stereotypes and like your typical stories of like you do everything. But this person actually said, I'm privileged working for my organization. Our dietitian takes care of all the food oh, home awesome. and away. And we have an admin full time who takes care of all of our travel, which I know that's a big oh, thing. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, but some usually organizations, that, yeah, that is some, it's usually it's the AT from what I've heard. They also said, I am the on-site contact when we're on the road. So room changes or booking extra rooms for athletes who got promoted. Um, but I don't have to set anything up pre-travel. Oh, that's nice. Our admin guy also takes care of transportation. I have heard that other ATs in other organizations have to do all that, but I think most organizations are trying to get away from that and let ATs focus on our job even when we are away. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like it's uh, it's beneficial for the organization. Let us right focus on our expertise right instead of being the uh, travel agent. So this story also actually brought up a really interesting point because um, we asked on our Instagram story – as a student, obviously as a student, you kind of have an idea of what setting you want to work. Yes. We asked, are you in the setting that you wanted to be in when you were in a student? Okay. Our results were split literally <laughs> to the person exactly down the middle. Oh my gosh. 50% of people are in the setting they want to be when they were a student and 50% were not. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Are you? No. <laughs> Actually, like, right after I got certified, yes. Well, I think it also depends, like, what do you define as your setting, right? Like, college, university, like, that has, like, that's a broad. Right. So, like, how technical are you about, like, oh, setting? Because I would say no. For me, like, if I was splitting, I mean, okay, like, if it's a broad approach, like, yes, I'm working college, university. That's what I wanted mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm not working what I thought I would be as a student. Right. Well, I feel like it's kind of hard for me because mine evolved <laughs> because when I first started in AT, I started AT because I wanted to be in professional or I want, no, I want to be in performing arts, which is professional. Um, yes. For the ones who I want to work with, just not professional team sports, professional dance, yeah. professional performing arts. Um, and then I started doing that and I didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> I mean, I still do, but like not it wasn't the excitement you were looking for right and then for a while i was really interested in doing a post-professional like fellowship or something like that with a d1 team yeah. just to just to see if i liked d1 but i didn't think that i would want to be in d1 like long term yeah i just never had that experience so yeah nice yeah but i'm really glad where i ended up yeah i feel that this person, this next person, L.E.G. So this is actually really funny because she's talking about, she actually starts uh, it with, yeah. I wanted to be in the professional setting. I won't, I still won't turn the, down the opportunity immediately, especially with baseball, but going through school showed me the amount of work that is required for each level of sport. I also now prioritize my mental health and work-life balance. More so, I began favoring other settings. I'm a huge fan of the community college setting, which surprised me because I didn't think I would like it as much as I do. I would say a con is sometimes not being taken seriously as a setting. Community colleges can get a bad rap for not being as serious as a four-year or a high school when it comes to sports. I was guilty of thinking that when I was in school until I got placed at a city college for my clinical site and fell in love with it. Nice. Which actually is what happened to me. And it's funny because this person, Ellie, um, I was messaging her and I was like, wow, your name looks really familiar. I think I just got an email from you. She got one of my athletes. Oh my gosh, that's funny. And obviously because we don't travel with sports other than football that much, um, one of my athletes got hurt. And so she let, she took care of one, one of my athletes. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I kind of feel that same way. Like community college, I've heard great things, but I just, <laughs> I just can't, I don't know. I just like four year. I feel like that's always been me. I feel like that's very you. I, it's just... I think I'm I'm here to stay. Yeah, you are. I'm here to stay. Yeah, I'm just a four-year guy, man. I just there's just some magic about it. See, I feel as like as annoying as it is sometimes, there's just a certain magic. 
I feel like that's call that I'm... call that foolishness. Anything. <laughs> all all my four year ATs are sitting there knowing what I'm talking about. It's it's not the most glamorous sometimes, and the pay's not as good as other settings. But I don't know. There's just something about it. And I gotta say, like the pay is pretty well in community college in in at least California, but um, it's a grind. It is a grind, it's especially a grind. if you have football. Because mm-hmm. I mean, football itself is a grind. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, and the resources too. Sometimes community college, it's kind of a bummer. Like, I I still it blows my mind that these schools still haven't really looked into like not all of them have a strength conditioning coach. We have a full time strength and conditioning. Uh, that's coach. awesome. But that's not you know I've seen a lot of schools who gets paid way more than we <laughs> do. But <laughs> but it's it's surprising some schools don't. I'm just like man, at the college level, you feel like that would be a little more accepted. Or um, budgeted out, I guess. Right. Um, but I feel like sometimes the budget, like the AT budget for community college is pretty good. Yeah. Sometimes. Again, I, I bet I bet it depends where. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's probably better than some four years for sure. Yeah. I, yeah, I think it just depends on where you are. So this next one is talking about co- uh, cons that outweigh the pros in their setting. Oh, okay. This one's by Anonymous. My GA position covered high school, and the contracting hospital offered me the job full-time after graduation. This hospital is growing and paying more than any other hospital in Michigan. I don't actually work in the hospital. We had Saturday coverage in the clinic during COVID that was to help those that were injured on Friday nights, but that all stopped when the AT side started getting budget increases And then the PAs determined they wanted to work the Saturdays instead. This included paying for our clothes and getting us MedBridge for CEUs. Hey, MedBridge. Which we should shout out MedBridge, by the way. If you guys are interested in MedBridge for CEUs, we have $150 off if you use the code ATCORNER. It also helps support the show, which thank you. Thank you for the people who have been um, doing that. It is super helpful. We appreciate it. Hey, time to get a jump on those CEUs. And you guys get CEUs, which is awesome. Yeah. Anonymous continues with, I don't know if I will stay in this setting, though. I've never had to fight so hard for common sense things. The school has a strength coach, but wouldn't put him in that position. The coaches don't believe in lifting to help the athletes overcome injuries. The boosters brag about having 30000 in funds, but won't help sponsor a nutrition program. So it's a hard pill to swallow every day, knowing I'm going to have to fight for something. I look at the job boards more than I probably should. Which I feel like in the we talked about this in the in part one. Um, it's important to recognize that sometimes it's not just the setting and sometimes it's the job. Oh, 100 percent. 100 percent. And, you know, obviously, AT, we're used to fighting for things a lot and we're good at fighting for things. But also, it does get draining when it's everything. And it wears on you. Yes. And you shouldn't have to deal with that. No. And also, um, I have, I've heard some iffy things about some, some hospitals sometimes. Really? Yeah. I don't know, I've heard some iffy things that, like, some people, like, it, it really depends how they view AT. Yes. If you, obviously, it goes for kind of everything. If you yeah. are valued and if they see value in you, then most of the time that translates. And yep. I mean, if it's possible. Yeah. Um, and I think the right people have to value you. Definitely. So, for example, like somewhere where I've worked, our admin valued us so much and they would fight for us so much, but the upper, upper admin didn't. Yeah. And so it was all like it hit a wall as soon as it got out of our department. Yeah. And so it's like we had so much support in one area that was important, but to make meaningful change, it was difficult because the upper upper admin didn't. Yeah. They didn't see the value. Yeah, that's tough. Which not only makes it frustrating for us ATs, but it also makes it frustrating for our bosses. Yeah. Big time. Um, so just to kind of round it out, I just, um, tried to add in another, we have, uh, middle and high school pros and cons. Okay. I know we talked about a lot of this in the, um, 
part one, but yeah. I feel like it kind of transitions because we, we start to get some pros and cons. We're going to talk about different settings and the pros and cons too. Perfect. This one's by Natalie P. New grad slash first year certified here. I work at a small private school where I cover both the middle and high school. Pros, never a dull moment. Kids say some funny things and the mechanism of injury stories are usually entertaining. Isn't that the best? Yes, 100%. They become, quote unquote, your kids. Cons, feeling like you are on an island, especially being fresh out of school. You go from a preceptor looking over your shoulder for two years of clinicals and double checking almost everything you do so there is no one to check you or bounce ideas off of. Which I remember when you were um, uh, looking kind of for your first jobs and stuff, that was something that was important to you is having other certifieds with you so you can bounce ideas off of. That was really big for me. It didn't really happen. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I was alone for a while. I also don't really like doing things alone, so... But well, I mean, that made me grow. You did. And you, you had a hybrid. You can bounce ideas off of me. And that's, I think, where I, where I was able to survive. Yeah. Um, just not at work. <laughs> yeah, not at work. Um, that's what I think is, and I think I've talked about this before. We, as a profession, believe, and you guys can challenge me on this. I feel like we believe that the high school setting is reserved for newly certifieds. And then you just grow out of the high school setting, which I don't believe, like I believe just like AT is a destination um, profession, high school is also a destination setting. Like you can choose high school and make it your own and be as much of an athletic trainer as a college. Yeah, that's true. Athletic trainer. That's true. Um, So That's the thing, though, is I think that especially because there are so many jobs of high schools, especially out here, that just has one athletic trainer and we reserve it in our minds for a freshly, newly certified. Yeah. Like that, um, I mean, some people, that could be detrimental or that could, like, that's a huge learning curve. And where are they going to start to learn from? Other than like learning from doing is important. Yes. But also learning from others. Learning from the failures is a a good learning tool. Right. So I know that um, something that some after I worked alone, I started working part time at a college. And so just so I could get some experience and and some time working under seasoned athletic trainers um, before I got my full time job. And. I thought there was so much value in that. Yeah. And especially if you are working like two part-time jobs, um, then you can get like even more variety of experience. I know that our part-times, we always try to work with them and like, okay, here's like some things that you can work on. Here's some things that you're great at. And so they get that feedback too, because you don't get that feedback when you're alone. No. The only feedback you get is when people are mad. And that is not exactly the best. Yeah, no, that's it's not a good feeling. <laughs> no, because then it just makes you feel like, man, have I done anything right? Right. This next, these next pros and cons are for specifically contract ATs, which I feel like is a very still young AT kind of thing, like something that a lot of newly certifieds do. So I feel like a lot of newly certifieds do contract AT work, but I feel like when I was working contract. Uh-huh. When I was working contracts a lot, and actually when I was solely working contracts, yeah, I feel like there were a lot of seasoned ATs who were also okay. Um, and then I knew some seasoned ATs who that was their entire job. Yeah. So some people shared the pros of contract um, is there's you get a variety of experiences and you get to pick your schedule, which is nice, right? You can turn down and like, oh, I don't, you don't want to work soccer, you never have to work soccer. Yeah, it's true. Um, you don't work work on Sundays. We'll just don't pick up Sunday work. Yeah. Um, but that also comes with cons. You often have to buy your own kit supplies. True. It's often hard to leave athletes after you get attached, and there's no follow up. Which I think is the most annoying. Mm-hmm. And plus, like with like contract stuff too, like depending, right? The first thing you think of when you think of contract is like event coverage, mm-hmm. and it's like all you're doing is event coverage. Right. So your rehab. Yeah. Kind of suffers a lot of the time. Like you're only doing one aspect of what AT, the full scope of being an athletic trainer. Right. Which I mean, if you like event coverage. Yeah, that's perfect. And the emergency care and Mm -hmm. the pay was actually really good. 
for, for a true. contract. But the problem is it's because you have to buy your own supplies yeah. and you have to pay your own taxes, Yes, which I think can get really confusing if you don't know if you're or, not comfortable. or if you don't know what to write off and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that, and no one really tells you, like you, ha- you have to like reach out and how do I do this? Yeah. Again, with the whole mentorship thing. Oh, definitely. And again, you're, you could be on an island for that too. Actually, yeah. Yeah. The only time that I feel like I was working not on an island when I was doing contract work was like big events. And sometimes it's word of mouth or you kind of go with a, um, like a third party. Right. And like pick up, like they give you the shifts, but then also you're missing out on the, the pay rate. Mm-hmm. Um, contract ATs, if you guys want Southern California performing arts work, I have lots of that. If you, <laughs> if you want jujitsu, we have contacts there. Um, that's true. They're always looking for help. They pay well too. I got that. Youth football. I have what I would not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, youth football, something else. I don't. I mean, contract work for some people is already like, eh. Youth football, that is the bottom of the barrel. That's brutal. I think one of the biggest cons that I had in this setting was um, chasing my paycheck. Yeah. Like, yes, you get to choose your schedule and you can pick up whatever you want. And I think it's not as a, not as much of a problem now because I feel like ATs. I feel like actually there's more work than ATs are willing to pick up. Yes. But when I was doing contract work, it was the opposite. And so it was kind of hard to pick shifts well, sometimes. And you know what? I think, too, because it goes like what I've been hearing also is there's like a ref shortage, too, for like mm-hmm. certain sports like mm-hmm. soccer. Right. Has a ref shortage. And a big reason of because of that is because these refs are tired of getting yelled at. <laughs> right. Like they're literally going out there to get abused by these coaches. Right. So I feel like for some of these events, that's kind of where the ATs are at, like. Why am I going to deal with parents like yelling at me about their kid because I'm trying to take care of their child? Right. So like what? Wh- it's a respect thing. Why will I go out there on my Saturday? And yeah, sure, I'm getting paid. But it's like sometimes the money's just not worth getting berated by parents who are like their kids going to the NFL. Well, your kid's five. Absolutely. And he only has one brain. So I'm going to protect this brain from the concussion that you clearly don't think is a big deal. Yep. Did that happen to you? Mm, sounds familiar. <laughs> okay, so moving from contract into college. So we have two of these. We have uh, this one's from Jen B. She's talking about pros. Anything to do with athletes and my time spent with them. Nicer facilities than when I was at a high school. I also use the knowledge that I have from school a bit more. I'd agree with that. I felt like that was limited at the high school. Really, though, the athletes are the best part. I'd agree with that. I love getting my tea. You are really good at getting the tea for oh, your team. Oh, dude. Well, my team's giving me the tea. That, I, that's a big pro to the job. <laughs> when you get the tea on your team, that's pretty awesome. Dude, college AT. That's where it's at, baby. Oh, yeah. You're here to stay. All right. Let's talk about the cons because that list is long. Too. <laughs> <laughs> um, cons. Long hours. Yes. Working six to seven days a week. Unfortunately, yes. Multiple sports, but coaches thinking on theirs and their needs yep. and our schedule is all that yep. matters. That is, that is to the T. Every sport thinks their sport is the most important. Mm-hmm. Also, lack of respect from coaches. Until until they're complaining about another sport. right? All the sports feel that they're important until they feel like their sport's not getting enough. And then they're like, oh, football gets everything. Football does get everything. It's not wrong, but some of it is because they kind of have to. Yeah. I have a love, 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 hate, hate relationship with football. And it's because I feel like they do get everything. And I mean, I work football and I love working football, but I I try so hard to make sure that they are that the other sports feel like we are giving them some love. Well, how um one of the places that I worked, like we didn't have football, but like we had a a big baseball program, like a national um, recognized baseball program. So the biggest thing that I would always have, and also mind you, I work track. So <laughs> track already feels like they're the most hated thing ever and never get anything. Right. So their biggest thing was like, oh, baseball gets this. And to be honest, 
most of the stuff that they're like, well, baseball. No, they don't. <laughs> like, actually, <laughs> if you take out football from some of these schools that don't have it, most of the schools that, or most of the sports, in my experience, have been treated pretty fairly. Like, a lot of times the kids got all butthurt about, like, shoes and stuff. And I'm like, well, yeah, there's a hundred of you. Like, Oh, yeah. Like, imagine buying shoes for a hundred of you compared to shoes for, what, 40 baseball guys? Right. That's, uh, the the price tag's a little different. Right. Track, track kids like to find a way to complain. That's what I've learned. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. They got to find a way that they're being hated on somehow. I mean, I feel like they are, though. I don't know. In my experience, I mean, I again, I can only talk to the programs that I was at. I never felt like they were I be, even working in it because obviously you're associated with it. I never felt like I had lesser. Not that you had lesser than compared everyone to. hates. Trash oh, yeah. Trash. Well, yeah, people don't like them, but it's not <laughs> like they're being treated differently. Maybe. At least in my experience, I haven't seen them okay, being treated different, differently. Well, they also had me. Right. You give them the world. Yeah, I I love those kiddos. But even even so, like even when I was out of the office, mm-hmm. like the other ATs, when they had to take care of track, I thought they did a good job. Oh, good. I mean, they would give me a hard time after and be like, dude, track. I'm like, Your I, kids are I needy. I know. Yeah. They'll complain, <laughs> but they never neglected them. Um. So going back to the six to seven days a week. I actually, there are some college ATs who I know who are working like seven days a week and aren't getting days off. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. I can't do that. I don't know how you're doing that. I wouldn't do that for a job. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I work like without without you get knowing that the compensation for it's somewhere. Right. Like, okay, like whatever. If I if I had to work seven days, which if I had to work seven days in a week, that's pretty tough. But like. At least I know, like, okay, it's I'm it's getting made up somewhere. Right. But, like, some of these colleges, it's not getting made up until the summer. No. And even then, depending on the level you're at, your summer is not exactly freedom. Right. I work, like, five... I try really, really hard to work five days a week. There are some times that I have to work six, but if I work six, then I try to make it up somewhere else. Also, it depends on your the way you're paid. Right. right hourly it's a little bit easier to get away with the five you know the 40 hour work week right but like if your salary man sometimes it's working that six just happens also like it's a whole it's a whole like mental state thing too because yeah. if if i'm working five days a week and i'm working six days a week and i don't get overtime then you bet I'm going to try to work really hard to do five days a week. Yeah. But if I'm working five days and I have to work a sixth day, but I get overtime, then I'd be more willing. Right, exactly. Otherwise, I'm like, you don't value me. Yeah, no, 100%. So this next one is a gem from Jen. Oh, nice. And it is an audio story. Yes. An audio story that neither of us have heard. Okay, here we go. Let me pull it up. It's been an interesting week for you to ask this question because it's been bookended by highs and lows uh, for the profession. Starting Saturday, we had a soccer incident where we had an unconscious athlete that had to be transported to the hospital. Um, They are fine. Uh, But the parents were there and the father came out of the stands and uh, was holding their child's neck, yelling at me, going, I've got C-spine, I've got C-spine, we're going to roll them, we're going to roll them, we're going to roll them. Um, And I'm in my calm athletic trainer voice going, no, sir, we're not going to do that. Your child is breathing normally. They have a pulse. They're still unconscious. We're going to leave them right here. Everything turned out fine for that athlete, and it was just a very difficult week for many other reasons. But tonight, uh, we had two athletes come back after fairly significant injuries, and both scored, and both of them uh, dedicated their goals to me, which was always fun. But why did I choose the the setting that I chose. 
Uh, it's more why did I stay in the venue that I did? Because I certainly didn't choose junior college. Um, had you asked me that a million and a half years ago when I got certified, I never, ever would have said that I wanted to be a junior college athletic trainer. Uh, I didn't even know junior colleges had athletics, to be quite honest. I didn't realize that junior colleges were anything more than glorified high school when I started uh, my job 21 and a half years ago. Actually, almost 22 years ago now. Junior college definitely has a place in academia and higher education. They do so many amazing things for so many deserving students. Um, the resources that they offer um, are, is just incredible. I've become a believer in junior college education, quite frankly. And uh, that's part of the reason that I stayed, because with junior college education, you always you also get junior college athletes. They are a very interesting bunch across the board, but I'm not sure that I would change a lot of what I have done because of the athletes. Uh, we only get them for a short time the shortest time pretty much in almost any setting uh, with the exception of maybe a physician extender. We only get them for two years. Um, so our relationships are short, they're intense, uh, and they could be long lasting. I've had some athletes that are now friends that I have been, that I have known since my first year at, uh, at my current employer, but do I, f I am the only athletic trainer for around 17 sports. Um, I do love the everyday challenges that multiple sports give me. I do hate the fact that I'm always feeling like I'm never quite doing enough for all of the athletes. Uh, because I do have to do things like ship them out for rehab um, almost all the time because I just don't have time to do a lot of it or to do a lot of it well. But I think it's I think it's a great niche for someone who likes a lot of different things at a lot of different times. Um, well, hasn't decided on a quote-unquote favorite sport that they have um, or wants to learn a new sport. I learned uh, hockey, ice hockey and lacrosse when I, when I came up here. Two sports I had never really worked with before or never really had paid much attention to because I went to college in the South and those weren't things that we had. So junior college is a fantastic setting and uh, it does have its limitations because it tends to be uh, mostly one or two man shows uh, and a lot of times funding is fairly limited. It's certainly not um, a division one program, but you definitely can get creative with what you have and what you can make work. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. For 21, 22 years yeah. of counting. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a JC kid. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, but that is, I think that if, is your setting. I think if I had 18 sports or 19 sports or however all, many. All to yourself? I think it would not be the setting for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with my I, I'm actually really lucky I have football in the fall and I help out <laughs> yes barely yes the word lucky and football in with, the same sentence that just happened with some of the other sports um like I did cross country on Saturday I'm jealous and then 
I have men's basketball in the winter. I was supposed to help, by the way. And you were gone. You I were know. traveling. I was. I had to travel. See? Pros and cons. <laughs> Here we go. And then uh, um, baseball in the spring. Well, yeah, I was going to say how your and school's- I help out with swim a little bit. How's your school, your school structured with uh, your spring sports? You don't have a lot of them. Nope, we only have four in the spring, and two <laughs> so of them that, are men's and women's swim. That helps. And then the other two are baseball. And oh, you softball. do basketball. Yeah, but that's winter. Yeah, winter. <laughs> Gosh. Which I do so have to I say, the like... winter sports do pose some kind of inconvenience when you have to cover fall or spring sports because they run right into them. Yeah, but that's part of the fun of it. You said that with so much passion. <laughs> You want to move on to industrial? Let's do or it. Do you have some more college? Oh, I mean, I always have more college. I know you have more college. I'm all about it. I'm all about that for your life. <laughs> it it really is a love. It is a love hate. Yeah, but you. But the love does outweigh. It does. Even with all the travel. It does. Mm-hmm. Depending on the travel. It depends on how you travel. Like if you travel all the time, like that. Like when you're gone more days in your home. Yeah, that you used to live that life. Yeah, that wasn't fun. <laughs> but when you travel like occasionally, it's a few days out of the week. You still don't like traveling. You traveled to what once or twice this season? Once this season. And it's still was This was not- the long trip. Yeah. This one was a long trip. But you see like it would be fine because like this week I know I'm not traveling. And, like, if I were to travel the next time, it'd be the next week. So it's not like how it was when I traveled before, where literally every week I was Wednesday gone. Wednesday through Sunday. I was gone Wednesday through sen- Sunday. Yeah. Whereas, like, time. here, like, okay, I traveled last week, and it, wa- it was, what, five days? Wednesday, Wednesday to Saturday? It was supposed to be Wednesday through Sunday, but yeah, you I lucked out. I, yeah, back I, work, I worked it out. <laughs> but, okay, so, like, Wednesday to Saturday, no travel this week. And then they're traveling next week. Like if I were to be on that trip, that's not that bad. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, I th- I'm saying like grand scheme. Like <laughs> it could be done. It could be done. Whatever. Let's talk about. Let's get away from sports. <laughs> yay, sp- actually, yay, sports. So we have some pros and cons on industrial. Okay. Some pros are the hours and the home life balance. Great pay most of the time and able to plan time off. Those are the biggest ones that I saw. Yeah. I feel like able to plan nice. time off is pretty um pretty nice. Because I feel like it, with, it is. That's true. Like you usually have to do like oh, I'm going to take my PTO like here or whatever. Yeah. Um I feel like with me I'm like, "Oh yeah, I could probably take this day but off." But that's the fun. And then we're like, "Oh, just kidding. We have three sporting events and oh, our part-time can't work. Okay, never mind." But I that's have. the fun. The fun of athletics you just when am i off (laughs) um cons some people aren't motivated to return to full duty yeah i can see that which i feel like a lot of physicians who are working with industrial athletes have a problem with this and they are very stingy to take people off work when they need it yeah um it's slow to make meaningful change and you're reporting to managers with no medical background. Well, I was also going to say, and you have to deal with OSHA. Oh, some people did write that. I yeah. didn't write it. And I, I heard dealing with OSHA is terrible. Yeah. I had to deal with OSHA just a little bit, and it sucks. Yeah. It and does. workers' comp. I mean, Especially that's... because I think OSHA doesn't value athletic trainers because of where we're at. Yeah. Um, so that Don't say just... pain. Don't say pain. Don't ever say pain. <laughs> That's a different thing now. <laughs> so the rest of ours are actually military, and then we're going to go into generic pros and cons. It's good to see, uh, to hear a little bit about the military. I've heard some great things. Yeah, when I put the call out, I was surprised to see actually, I didn't, I mean, I know some people who listen to us are in the military. Yeah. And I feel like we kind of hear from the same people. Um, about the military, but we got a couple people who we haven't heard from about the military, which I thought was, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. I, I, from what I've heard, 
the U.S. military is trying to make it a very college athletics vibe. Yes, and actually we have some stuff on that. So let's, I don't know which one, which I think it's in the last one, um, but let's start with this first one. Let's do it. Kylie Z. Go for it. She says, military pros, 6.30 to 3, Monday through Friday, days off for every federal holiday, a higher salary, 40-hour work weeks, lots of educational classes to take, nice. free CEUs, not taking any work home with you, scheduled appointments, lots of other healthcare providers to work with, optional relocation almost anywhere in the country slash world, helping those who serve our country. So those are some of the pros. Nice. Which, by the way, I just want to point out, I had a job that was set hours it was 40 hour work weeks lots of free CUs. <laughs> i didn't have to take any work home with me there were appointments like literally everything that she's saying um except for the higher salary and i didn't like it well it's not for everybody no i didn't like the job so like there were so many oh, pros to the job oh that's what you're saying like there were so many things that i was like man i wish i could just take this with me to wh- wherever wherever to make, but, well, you see, that would just make the perfect job. And come on. Yeah, that, that can't happen. <laughs> but anyway, she keeps going. I'm glad that she found this. Yes. With like, those are so many great pros. Yeah. Um. So she said, my internship with the Air Force Academy worked with incoming soldiers during their basic training and then with the Air Force Academy's football team. Nice. So it was a combination of working with soldiers during their field training, but also student athletes. Nice. Which I feel like is a lot of times people are like, oh, well, I don't want to leave sports. Yeah. You still get sports. <laughs> well, also, too, uh, work, from what I've heard, working the military academies, because they a lot of them are NCAA programs, uh, you, you get the benefit of still working in athletics, but you also get uh, U.S. military benefits Oh, for working there. Oh. Yeah. That is really cool. Um, so she continues with, my job currently focuses on shoulder... Oh. Shoulders. My current job focuses on soldiers. Oh, I want to almost, say, sh- almost I want to say shoulders so bad. Um, who may be coming back from deployment, getting ready to deploy, and making sure they're healthy enough to pass their physical requirements and combat and fitness tests. Nice. We also see many different job settings within the soldiers stationed here, such as mechanics, medics, cooks, all kinds of jobs. I also specialize in working with the pregnant and postpartum soldiers, which is a population I've never gotten to work with before and has been an incredible learning opportunity. Interesting. It's crazy. The Army in the past had no idea what to do with pregnant women. Now athletic trainers, strength and conditioning coaches, nutritionists, and mental health providers are working together to teach pregnant and postpartum soldiers how to still be physically active and healthy, make exercise modifications, provide treatment and rehab for discomfort and injuries, reducing stress, as well as educate and prepare them for pregnancy, giving birth, and the transition through postpartum and back to their specific job duties. Nice. Which is so awesome. Yeah. That is so awesome. So it sounds like she really likes it. Yeah, I would say so. So that's a good thing. Yeah, that is a good thing. But it looks like this next one did list out Akon. Yes. This is anonymous. You want to read this one? Yeah. So the pro is very structured hours, great facility, and no travel. The con, though, the cons, I should say, can be slow and, I like this one, boring injuries. I know. I had to ask. I was like, wait, I need to know what your boring injuries are. Yeah, I would say, what do we define as boring? Oh, it's in there. All right. So anonymous continues with, I'm a government contractor with the United States Air Force. And I work mainly with fighter pilots. Which, that's dope. Oh, I bet. Especially with Top Gun coming out, I'm just saying. <laughs> the things I most often see are musculoskeletal injuries in relation to the back, shoulders, and neck. The gear they wear for flying loads... The gear they wear for flying loads them greatly anteriorly. As well as when they are not flying, they are often at a desk. Very likely with poor posture. Which is why we see so many issues posteriorly. Which... I'm going to go to one of our performing arts. They had this big costume that was a horse and they were the front legs and the horse back legs were like the puppet. Uh huh. And so they had to, they had to put this big horse um, costume on and the way that it sits, it was on a harness 
but the way that it sits on the shoulders, it puts so much weight and like forced you into an anterior pelvic, pelvic tilt. Oh my gosh. So with those performers, we really had to work on core strength. Yeah. Because they were in an entire show. Yeah. For, I think it was uh, an hour show, an hour long show, I think, that they were wearing this. Yeah. And they were standing in that posture. Yeah. Man. So anyway, this is, that's really interesting to hear about that. All, I mean, I can imagine that no, in a cockpit. A lot of the work we do involves manual therapy, spinal manipulation, and dry needling to release tension in the head, neck, and back. We also are lucky enough to have a fully equipped gym that allows us to prescribe a weight training program that most of the pilots follow to increase their body's resiliency and allows them to fly for longer with minimal complications. Some of the pilots are very active in the outdoors and with sports, so occasionally we will see injuries elsewhere, but but this isn't often. So I get, I get what he's saying as far as born injuries, because it's true. Like, if you kind of see the same same things over and over and Dude. over and over and over and over again. I used to hate the neck because <laughs> I saw it so much, yeah. so much. And now I love the neck. Like, it is probably... Yeah, because you don't have people coming in like, can I get a neck massage? Right. Can I, you, can you massage like, if, my if neck? If one more person asks me... Miss Sandra, can you massage my neck? That's not how they refer to me. That's how my football guys refer to me. <laughs> that is how your football guys refer to you. Although they definitely don't ask for neck massages because they know I'm going to say no. They don't come in and be like, bruh. No. Neck massage, huh? No. Okay. Um, This next one's actually really long and it's awesome. It just goes, o- it goes over pros and cons, and ones that are up for interpretation. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this one's by Dominic W. He said, just for a little bit of background, a few things that are important for context before I give my pros and cons. So he's been in (laughs) uh, the military setting for three plus years. Okay. Um, Also, a small, uh, he's went to a small but strong undergrad program, Power 5 grad slash GA, Three different D3 or D2 schools for nine plus years with six years as a head AT. Nice. I was very burned out on college athletics and needed a change. Military branch and unit type can change things drastically. Some ATs can dry needle with Air Force depending on state license, but I know that Army can't. Hmm, Interesting. I'm fortunate enough to be in a good position to start with, an experienced unit with seasoned operators, and a very manageable volume. At basic training facilities, this is a very different dynamic. Which actually, um, I some place that I worked that is a place that I can't name that I've talked about before. Whoa. Um, we have two sides, uh-huh. and the two sides operate drastically. Oh yeah, different. I remember you talking about it. Like so different. Yeah. And I I prefer working on one side versus the other. Yeah. Um. Anyway, my pros and cons compared to collegiate setting. This is Dominic. Pros. Work-life balance, no or few nights slash weekends slash travel. And if it does happen, you typically get good notice, less regular schedule changes to have to adapt to. Oh, yeah. Athletics, it's a constant battle. <laughs> um, That's actually something that we talk about with our volunteers. So, like, we have student volunteers uh-huh. who come in and, like, are doing observation hours or they're learning what it is to become yeah. an athletic trainer. And sometimes, because we always put them through like a little interview, basically like, are you a computer science major yeah. or do you actually want to be an athlete? Yeah. Um, so we just kind of ask them like a few questions about fit and also like making sure that they are like, this is actually what they want to do, yeah. you know? Um, and sometimes like we get so busy and we're like, so we email them and we're like, we're sorry. Can we reschedule the interview? Like blah, blah. <laughs> and we're like, this is part of being an athletic trainer yeah. is being adaptable to last minute changes. Sorry about it. Yeah. We try not to do it too often, but we've definitely had to pull that before. Um, so anyway, he continues not on call 24 seven expected to respond tethered to your phone and email. This one was huge for me and my, my mental health. I can go hike with my dog for three hours and not even worry about checking my messages when I finish. That's nice. It's a beautiful thing. That is nice. Which I feel like for the two of us, I feel like that's sometimes why we choose to go somewhere without cell service. Yes, that is very true. Because. Oh, whoops. Sorry. Oops. We weren't available because we're not at work. (laughs) All right. To continue. They are very appreciative. I'm sure this varies somewhat. 
there is a sense of frustration with the bigger military medical system, so they appreciate the hands-on and taking time to work with them and help them at the local level. Above and beyond is appreciated as such and not the expected norm. There's more of a sense that you can say no. That's what I've heard about the VA. Oh, really? I've I've heard a lot of veterans are very, very, uh, the VA has a bad rap. Oh, right. Yeah, so I get what he's saying where like at that local level, I'm sure, I'm sure that's very welcome compared to the, uh, um, like the actual major medical system. Mm-hmm. So it's good to hear that there is that separation because yeah, you always hear bad things about the VA, um, but to hear like maybe like actually like on the bases and stuff, the care is a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, more pros, cool field trips and working with some badasses who have fun toys. That's a fair assessment. Way more fighter jets. All kidding aside, it is a rewarding population to work with. History taking is much <laughs> more entertaining. It is a good time to get into the setting. In general, the military is expanding their HPO, human performance optimization type of programs, and being more proactive to well-being instead of letting people get beat up and dealing with it later. It's, yeah, see? And if you're in and have some experience, plus a security clearance, you will be well positioned as good positions open up or are developed. There is hope that more positions will become GS as well instead of contractor. It can be more efficient. I got to the point where it annoyed me to be at a tennis match for five hours plus setup and breakdown. <laughs> it just wasn't a good way to be a resource for many people and utilize our valuable skills well. Fair. Um, potentially, we have good resources to utilize to promote readiness, which is a good buzzword to know. <laughs> HRV trackers, metabolic screenings, etc. to go beyond history taking and hands on skills. Oh, that's nice. That's pretty mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so the cons. No on-site interview. This is nerve-wracking if you've never done it before. It was for me. Normal for the military world, though. It is very slow getting started. Security clearance processes take (laughs) forever. I can see that. It is a government operation. Positions are often newer. Limited equipment. Sometimes improvised facilities, populations, especially experienced service members aren't used to working with us or know how to use us. Many want evals to make sure nothing serious and then just suck it up and don't follow up. (laughs) I'm still working on cracking that one. (laughs) Documentation is more of an emphasis, which I don't say is a negative thing. I actually appreciate being in a situation where you can stay on top of it more regularly. Fair. Just know that there's more expectation and accountability in this area than most collegiate settings. You have timelines to complete it, and it's not everyone's favorite part of the job. No one likes working with A-H-L-T-A, which is our old system, or Genesis, which is the new system. (laughs) ATs weren't in the picture when military medical system developed. Therefore, we aren't accounted in a lot of things, and not being active duty were very much gray area. Policies were written without us in mind. For example, my friend in a basic facility can't treat blisters. The type of unit, again, will impact this significantly. Interesting. You can't change things easily or quickly. I was head AT. Once you get AD and team docs thumbs up, you can go immediately implement a change. In the military setting, you're part of a much bigger machine. And again, not being active active duty doesn't hold much clout. Best recommendation is to develop positive relationships with your local command to affect positive changes as best you can. Again, I'm fortunate that my leadership is supportive and appreciates our role. And then lastly, there's less acute care or traumatic injury incidents. Again, very much depends on setting. Interesting. And then here's a list of can be either differences. I'll let you interpret. Uh, money. It was a lateral move for me. Total salary, break it down hourly is laughable, laughably better though. That like, valid. That's true. <laughs> right. That's true. Like any other setting, there are ranges. No longer a one-stop shop for all things medical. Good to have more resources and not be responsible for everything. However, you're not in the loop as much and don't have as much control or ability to direct traffic as effectively. There is a way different culture. Again, I'm sure drastic differences for each situation was a positive for me, but too many factors to generalize as a thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, Schedule. There can be very early mornings for many positions. Just depends on what you prefer. I tried to list plenty of each to give a good picture, but for me, the pros totally outweigh the cons slash unknowns of making the switch. I haven't regretted it for a second. I've always loved the profession and our skill set. I've never loved a job this is a me- much better fit for me. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Which I feel like that is something, a common theme 
of loving the profession but having trouble with where they're at. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's why it's so important in interview making sure that like it's a good fit for you. Oh, definitely. Like, they're not just interviewing you. You need to interview and them. And that's the important thing to remember that I think a lot of young, newly certified ATs forget. Mm-hmm. Because you're just worried about, I need a job. Yes. I got bills to pay. Yes. When you should be, again, it's always hard because you are in that position where bills have to get paid. But being <laughs> right. picky and right. making sure the setting is right for you saves a lot of stress. Mm-hmm. Like when you're young, you can handle that stress a little bit better. But why would you want to put yourself through that? It gets exhausting. Yeah. I feel like when you're young, you put up with a lot more. Like I used to drive two hours to work and I yeah. would cry every day oh. if I had to do that now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um. Okay. So this is just our generic list of I kind of condensed a lot of what people had as their general pros in any setting. Again, these are relative. We're going to talk about the cons or we're going to talk about the ones that, yeah. that could be listed as either. Um, and again, these are not in every settings, but these are the ones that people really liked from their own setting. Yeah. Um, someone in the college le- level said tuition reimbursement programs for master's degrees. Yep. Which, dude, that is awesome. Big time. Did you, you got that right? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, because I was lucky enough to be a grad assistant. Right. So my tuition for my master's was paid for. Um, someone got free tuition for their wife and kids. That's nice. Which technically, some state schools, yeah. Right, right. So a couple of people said they have 100% control over their schedule when I work and when I don't. Which I almost didn't. That's true. I mean, I know this was a pro that a lot of people put, um, but I almost put it in our like gray area one. Yeah. Because I think if I had 100% control over my schedule, I would never want to work. <laughs> <laughs> Which I used to. I used to have like my yeah. contract, like. Complete control of my schedule. And you know, prior to uh, prior to COVID, right before uh, lockdown happened, uh, you only had three days off in that month. Scheduled. Which was my choosing. That was your choosing. Right. I would not do that now. <laughs> See, the things we put up with. The learning. <laughs> the learning. Um, some people say travel the world for work, which I was like, okay, that's cool. Um, but that's also some people's cons. Yeah, I, was gonna, I was thinking about that. I was like... Like travel again, traveling the world for work. You're right. That is cool. But also like you only get such a small window of time to enjoy wherever Mm -hmm. you're at, Mm -hmm. depending on the level you're at. So it's like, yes, you traveled the world and you saw things, but you were also still expected to work. Right. So it's a balance. Yep. A couple people said they were home every night for dinner. Some, Which that's nice. Some people said holidays off, summers off, Sundays off, weekends off. That was there was a lot of pros of those. Dude, summers off. It's pretty. That's pretty that tight. That is pretty nice. Yeah. Um, and this one that this is, is the just... most. This is the most <laughs> AT answer I've ever heard. Getting gear. Yep. That's, Everyone that's loves the pro. gear. That's, that's a, big a big pro. pro. All right, generic cons. Kids not knowing their bodies. Oh yeah, dude. That's why high school I can't do it. Gen pop also not knowing their bodies. Yeah, I can't do it. It it really drives me nuts. Athletes running off to see even, the doctor. Even the difference between my the team that I work uh-huh. and then covering for another team of the same sport, like between men's and women's, and like my athletes react different to certain injuries compared to another. I'm like, dude, come on. Um, athletes running off to see the doctor. I feel like this is... Um, more likely when parents are involved yeah you know it it used to bother me but now i'm just like all right i just as long as you tell me eventually that's nice my coaches get pissed well you see that that's the thing is <laughs> it affects your coaches right in fact me sure if you want to go see it god bless just here's what i need right um being the only athletic trainer that was a con that a lot of people wrote yeah which I mean, yeah. I mean, in any setting, if you're in a college, yeah. high school, pro, yeah, if being, you're the only athletic trainer, being understaffed is pretty pretty rough. You can't be like, oh, I really don't like this person. Please go work with this other person. <laughs> <laughs> you know those days that you just don't want to help anyone. No. For real? Yeah. I forgot you're a natural helper. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, there's there's. <laughs> 
certain athletes, I'm like, oh, no. I gotta there do are it. some I days that I go to work and I'm like, I don't really want to be a giver right now. No, I didn't. I've never had that problem. Whatever. I've had days where I'm like, man, I hope like I can get my paperwork done. So hopefully no one asks for anything, but I've never been over helping. I mean, it's not over helping. <laughs> it's more like, please don't ask me for anything right now. I don't okay, have. I, I can vibe with that one. Yeah. I'll help you. Yeah, that sounds so forced. <laughs> oh, I'll help you. God. Please let me know if, if I'm crazy. <laughs> no, I'm Please. sure someone will share that. Um, I'm sure. I've talked to other athletic trainers yeah. who feel like that. Uh, well, you also have Am to I just heartless? <laughs> no, no. You also have to remember, I used to live in the athletic training room, so. Yeah. I compartmentalize a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I did. Do not. Did not. Um, lack of not. resources is a big con for people. Oh, God. Yes. Any setting. Yes. How others view your setting. Some people see high school as a set as settling instead of choosing it, which we talked a lot about this in this and the part one. Yeah. Um, also having to prove your value. That, oh, God. Yeah. I'm tired. I feel of, like just being an athletic trainer means you have to prove your value. In athletics, I'm tired of like I'm tired of like like athletics getting a free ride to like do whatever and like um like it gets a free pass to do toxic things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the school is closed and it's flooded, but Oh, sorry, athletic trainers, you need to come to work. Because football has to practice. Yeah, every employee is, no one in this whole school is allowed to come to yeah. campus except for athletics. Athletics can come to campus. And there's always just that mindset. I mean, again, each school is a little bit different. But, like, you know, athletics, you know, if you're not working hard, right, you're not getting better. Um, This one showed up on both. Okay. And also, just in general, like, these are pros and cons, I guess hours some people said f they wanted a flexible schedule some people said they want a regular schedule um some people are like oh i have early mornings so i get out early some people hate early mornings yeah. or some people are yeah. like oh i have my mornings to myself and i have a late schedule that's great some people that's don't great. like that <laughs> um the pay some people are like i have great pay and some people are like i don't see that's the thing that's why like I understand why we tell, you know, at that training students about pay, because, yes, there are not great paying jobs out there. But that is not all of athletic training. No, there are athletic training jobs that you are going to make a great living, mm -hmm. a great pay. So I understand why we tell ATs that, like, I mean, you really shouldn't be, <laughs> be in this for the money, but that does not mean you cannot make money. Right. being an athletic trainer. We are two athletic trainers on two athletic training salaries and we are doing just fine. We're living in Southern California. We are living. Um, and our and our dog is living. Yes. See, she's not starving either. No. Uh, dealing with parents or not dealing with parents. Yeah, dealing pros and cons. I was again. It depends on who, but yes, dealing with parents is a would be a big con <laughs> for me. You know what? Some I mean, most people, even the high school athletic trainers, were saying dealing with parents is a con, but some people did say dealing with parents was nice because you could. Like, if there was, like, an emergency or, or, like, if someone had to take someone, like, you can just send them with their parents. Yeah. Or their parents decide what to do. Yeah, it's true. And then work-life balance. That. Uh, yeah, that could be flexible. <laughs> That's a fluid answer. Yes. Do you have any other pros, cons, or indifferent? Uh, Pro, well, I guess it's not a generic pro, but. Uh, well, I guess it could be the relationships that we build. Oh, yeah. You know what? I, I don't know. I didn't write that. I, I a think, lot of people wrote that. I think that's a good generic one because no matter where we're at, we mm -hmm. build a really good relationship with our population. Mm -hmm. And obviously I'm biased because being in the college or the university setting, college university, um, like I get my kids four years, five years, so plenty of time to build a relationship and sometimes get annoyed with them, you know, but. That's that's why I like my setting the most is you really build a relationship with these kids. Right. So, so I definitely think the relationships and the impact. I, I think ATs definitely change a lot of a lot of people's lives. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that. Yeah. All right. So I know this episode got a lot of attention. Yes. Um, But we still need your guys' help sharing our podcast. If you guys should share this with just one friend or one person looking in a different setting or an athletic trainer, athletic training student, that would be so helpful for us. Um, we noticed some of you guys were leaving a f- um, ratings. We appreciate yes. you guys leaving a five-star rating. Woo! We got some more. Um, so thank you, thank you. We do Apple Podcasts, Spotify. I be- believe those are the two that have ratings. And then if you want yes. to leave a review, you can do so on Apple Podcasts. Um, if you guys want to interact with other listeners of the show or answer our question of the week, we have a Facebook group, AT Corner Facebook group, AT Corner Community. It's facebook.com slash group slash AT Corner Podcast. Um, every other episode, if you guys are new, we do as education or stories. This one was a story episode. Next week, we're going back to our education. And then if you guys want to submit stories for future episodes, we, you can do so on our Instagram story. So again, everything I just said and more is in the show notes. So all you have to do is scroll down. And I think that is all for our fine print for today. Yep. Thank you for helping us showcase athletic training behind the tape. Bye. Bye.